Hello everyone and welcome to a new Plant Zoo video where we are again doing a making of a DLC idea. So today we're doing the Forest Animal Pack, an idea that is somewhat of a Animal Pack sequel to the Pacific Northwest Pack. So without further ado, let's get into it. Beginning with our animals. We have the golden snub-nosed monkey, one of China's most iconic animals due to its blue face and red and orange coats. They live in the high mountains of China and are not really a common sight in zoos, only being found in zoos in China. But they have previously been housed at the San Diego Zoo, I believe, back in the 1980s. So it was a while ago, but there is history of them being housed outside of, outside of Asia. And I would love to see this animal be the flagship of this pack, as they are just a beautiful primate. Our next animal is the Tanuki, or Japanese raccoon dog, an iconic animal of Japanese culture and one of the most unique canids. Unlike most canids, these animals are able to climb trees with specially adapted claws, which allow them to grip onto the tree trunks and branches. They, they are honestly one of the most unique looking canids that we could get with that big fluffy fur. And yeah, I would I would love to see these guys, and I know a lot of people would really like to see the raccoon dog or the tanuki. There are two subspecies of raccoon dog, being the mainland Asian raccoon dog and the Japanese raccoon dog. Whichever one we would get, either would be great. But the tanuki, due to its cultural heritage, would be my preferred choice. The Reeves Montjac is a unique deer species from the forests of China. Well, I would say I won't say unique as they are in a large family of animals called the Montjacks. But unlike other deer in the game, these guys have exposed tusks which protrude from their from their upper jaw like a Chinese water deer, a tufted deer, and almost like a saber toothed cat, as most people like to call them. I know Montjacks and water deer have often been considered vampire deer, but those tusks are mostly for combat rather than drinking blood. But these animals are a common sight in many Asian sections in zoos and are a great filler species. And I would love to see a new deer variety in the game too. Giving Australia a bit of representation, pretty much the only Australian animal that we necessarily need, not Oceania unless we still need a tree kangaroo, but the short-beaked echidna is found in a variety of forests here in Australia, an insectivorous monotreme, which means they are a mammal that lays eggs. They are the only ones besides the platypus and the long-beaked echidna of Papua New Guinea. And yeah, these guys are found overseas as well as being found readily in zoos here in Australia. And I would love to see these guys. They wouldn't make a lot of noise, but just having them in the game would be fantastic. And as, Pete, as Frontier na nailed the porcupine, I think the echidna should be a walk in the park. Moving on to North America, we have the wild turkey, one of the most famous birds of the country, most notably of Thanksgiving. And I don't know all about the history of Thanksgiving and the turkey's relation to it, but I know that they are a highly requested animal. Although I think the oscillated turkey of Central America, uh, oscillated? I think it's oscillated. Yeah, oscillated sounds a lot better. The oscillated turkey is a bit more popular on the wish list, but. Wild turkey is just an iconic species that I feel should really be added to Plant Zoo at some point. Plant Zoo does not have any lagomorphs, so for those who don't know what a lagomorph is, it is a rabbit, hare, jackrabbit, that sort of thing. The snowshoe hare is one of the most notable wild species I could think of, with their distinct white coat from the winter seasons and a brown coat in the summer. These animals would be fantastic to see and would give a much needed representation to a family that is quite diverse. Our major carnivoran pick is the bobcat. Now this animal is a member of the lynx family and like their lynx, they have tufts on their ears. These animals are found in a variety of habitats from deserts to grasslands to southeastern forests, all the way up to the taiga biome. They are found in a whole variety of different forests, and given their adaptability and versatility, the bobcat would be a fantastic choice for the pack. A possible alternative for the pack is the North American porcupine, an animal I spoke about in the Pacific Northwest pack. 
Now, this animal is arboreal and would really fit the forest theme, but let me know what you think. Would you like to see the North American porcupine in this pack? Another species I talked about previously is the Virginia opossum, a marsupial from North America that also fits the forest theme very well. And I wouldn't mind seeing it in this pack, to be honest. And same with the North American porcupine. Both could do very well in this pack. Another species that could work well is the white-tailed deer, one of the most prevalent deer species in America and a common sight in many forests. So this animal would really fit the, the theme very well, just whether people really want another generic deer. That's the only problem. Western Capricale is a species from the forests of Europe that would also make a very cool addition to the game, with unique calls and beautiful plumage in the males and a very cool dance. The Western Capricale would certainly be one of the more unique birds that we could get in Planet Zoo. Another returning face is the North American Black Bear, found in almost all the same forests and habitats that bobcats are. They're, they are another very adaptable North American species and would really be a cool animal to have at the game. I know people say that they're getting sick of the bears, but the sloth bear was done very well, I um, mind you, and the spectacle bear is one of the most requested in the game. So I think the American black bear should deserve its place in the game. And spectacle bear and American black bear are really the only two bear species that we necessarily need. So, yeah, American black bear would fit this pack quite well. Another cool species to see in this pack would be the Gower, the largest bovine in the world in mass ratios, as they are a very hefty animal. These animals are from India and other parts of Southern Asia, with their distinctive white stockings on, on their legs and their massive horns, as well as their very buff bulk. They are a very magnificent species to look at, and they do live in forests, believe it or not, as they look like a buffalo in a plains environment, and they do inhabit grasslands from time to time, but they are largely found in a forested environment. And this is one of my favourite animals from the Asian continent, and I would love to see them added to the game, as I think they would look fantastic, and Frontier would be able to nail the gower in the game. And one of the last habitat animals we have on here is the coyote, one of the most notable canids of North America and Central America, found in a variety of habitats, much like the American black bear, white-tailed deer, and bobcat. A lot of animals from forests are also very versatile in other habitats, and coyotes are a stellar example of that. Coyotes would also bring great ambience with their calls, and yeah, they're just a very cool canid, very adaptable one and I would love to see them, but let me know what you think about them. Moving on to the exhibits, as animal packs generally have a regular exhibit animal, as we've seen in, over the course of the past year, with the Eurasian animal pack having the Herman's tortoise, Oceana having the spectacle flying fox, Arid with the desert horned viper, and Tropical with the brown throated sloth, it does seem that we're getting regular exhibit animals in the animal packs and walkthroughs in the scenery packs. So. I'm going with all exhibit animals for the regular exhibits here, except for one, and we'll get to that in a bit. But the common box turtle would be a great species to see. They're a very colourful turtle species, and come in a whole variety of colours. And this is just one of them. They are very beautiful turtles, and I would love to see them. With, with the stellar work that Frontier did on the Herman's tortoise, I think another turtle would be a great addition. One of the most notable snakes from the south, southeastern United States is the Northern Copperhead, a very beautifully patterned viper with distinct red and cream patterns. They are, and orange as well, but they are a very cool looking snake and I would, I would love to see them. We don't have a lot of snakes in the game and the Copperhead would be another great addition. Speaking of great snake additions, the King Cobra is by far the most requested snake. They are also the largest venomous snake in the world, only consuming other snakes generally. And fun fact, they are not even a true cobra in their own group, in fact. And yeah, the king cobra needs no real introduction. They are an epic species, found in a variety of forests, from dry forests in India to tropical rainforests of Indonesia. They are almost all throughout Asia, except the north. But um, in the south, they are a very prevalent species. They would be 
phenomenal to have in the game. Uh, given their size, I don't know if they would require a different exhibit or not, whether it be need, needing a different size to exhibit, considering these animals can get to six meters in length. But, hey, it, would you like to see the King Cobra in the game or just generally in this pack? Let me know what you think in the comments. Snakes are beginning to seem like a theme today, but no one can deny that the Eastern Coral Snake is a very beautiful species. With the red, the yellow, and the black, they are a beautiful alapid. I think they're an alapid. Hope so. <laughs> or either that or they're a colubrid, but they are a very cool snake nonetheless, and I, I would love to see more colorful exhibit animals add to the game. Because we, we do have poison dart frogs, but that's about as colorful as we get. So Coral Snake would be another great addition to the game. Continuing the snake theme, Timber Rattlesnake. They are a very cool viper species from the North American forests. And with, I mean, not this individual clearly, but their camouflage is impeccable, blending into the leaf litter like most other vipers do so well. But they are probably my favorite rattlesnake due to their pattern, but I would love to see them. Another alternative could be the Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake, but I, I picked the Timber Rattlesnake because of personal preference. So here we have our walkthrough exhibit option if Frontier were to do so. This is the Sugar Glider, a small possum species from Oceania. And why do they call them a glider? They have a stretch of, um, of skin between their front legs and their back legs, much like flying squirrels in the Americas. And yeah, it's a bit of a convergent evolution. Two very different species evolving to fit the same ecological niche. So the Sugar Glider would be a great addition to the walkthrough exhibits and be another unique mammal to utilize them. And yeah, I, I've seen them in, in real life and they are a very cute creature. And I think a really cool animation would be for them to glide from one perch point and like land on someone's face or like land on someone's hand, just crawl about and then jump back off to glide to the next point. I think that would be really cool to have in the game. And yeah, they're one of my top choices for an exhibit slot. So. Yeah, let me know what you think. Would you like to see the Sugar Glider? Moving on to the features of the free update, we begin with the plants. Foliage is definitely something that a lot of people still want in the game, myself included. And forests are by far the best example of forest diversity, particularly trees. So here we have the longleaf pine, a very not notable species from the southeastern United States. One of my personal favorite trees is the Canary Island Pine. Now, it may not look too special, but as a prehistory geek, I really have enjoyed its presence in prehistoric documentaries. Just last year, Life on Our Planet actually featured this tree in the Permian sequence with the Gorgonopsids and Scutosaurus. Yeah, that, they have been used prevalently in a lot of prehistoric documentaries, Primeval, I believe Walking with Monsters even utilized them, and Walking with Dinosaurs, I think, as well. But they're a very cool tree species that I would love to see add to the game just to be able to recreate the sort of atmosphere. I think that would be really cool. Another species of tree is the Whitebark Pine, a, another species that I've seen featured in documentaries. And yeah, that... They are what the name suggests. <laughs> the Huangshan pine is probably China's most famous tree, being found in its mountains and often a tree that you see growing from rocky outcrops. They're a very iconic tree, and with the golden stump those monkey in this pack, I think it would be a really cool addition to really create a cool atmosphere and something that's very country specific. Speaking of regional specificity, we have the Yoshino cherry tree, a notable species from Eastern Asia, particularly Japan. And that, yeah, they are a very beautiful tree. Now we do have a cherry blossom tree in the game from the base game, but another cherry tree would also be welcome. That one's quite pink. This one is sort of a lighter pink white color, sort of like our greater flamingo. Couple of other cool trees and plants. We have the Japanese black pine, a species commonly used in bonsai, and the foothill clover, another cool sort of little grass flower species. Another 
Japanese plant is the Japanese holly. And one last plant from the southeastern US is the loblolly pine. All these plants would be fantastic additions and yeah, would really diversify the forest roster. Moving on to major features, we have giving the, hi the highest appeal of all other animals to the giant panda. Given their newfound rarity overseas outside of China, they should, should certainly deserve the high appeal. They are a very rare species to find in zoos. I know Adelaide Zoo still has theirs for now, and I think a few zoos in Europe still have theirs, but I don't believe many places in America still have them. I, know, I think it's the Zoo Atlanta is the last place in the US that you can see a giant panda. And Singapore Zoo also has giant pandas, but they are gradually becoming rarer and rarer. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see what the future holds for pandas in overseas captivity. But yeah, in plant zoo, they should certainly have the highest appeal as they are by far one of the most popular animals when you go to a zoo that has them. Another feature is making the koalas more arboreal. Now, I will give it credit that koalas, when they are awake, they are quite energetic. Just this last m month, I actually had a koala climb up my leg, which was <laughs> certainly an interesting experience. Their claws actually quite hurt, but they are a very cool species and a very quirky one. But they do spend a lot of their time in the trees, particularly sleeping. So if we were to just get that at least, because they sleep for like 20, hour, 20 to 22 hours a day. Yeah, 22 sounds right. They sleep for 22 hours a day, and Plants Zoo doesn't quite reflect that. So I, I would love to see that implemented into the koala in the game to make it feel more realistic, as most times when you go to the zoo to see a koala, they're either sleeping or they're eating. But either way, it would make the koalas feel a lot more realistic. One of the major features here, we have hollow log shelters of varying sizes, because in zoos, there are various hollow logs that are brought in for animals to utilize. Here you can see a pair of red foxes utilizing a hollow log shelter. You can see a Tasmanian devil having a hollow log shelter and this brown bear in the bottom right corner, also in a hollow log. With hollow logs, you can have a natural shelter that can really disguise how animals sleep and make the animals more comfortable in their habitats. As Hollow logs would be something that they would seek out as shelter for many situations, like sheltering from weather, from the heat, all sorts of things. Tasmanian devils in particular, I've seen them in, in hollow logs many, many times. So I would love to see this. The hollow log we have currently is more of an enrichment tunnel item. So I would love to see more shelter-based hollow logs. So that would be really cool. Something else that would be really cool and really take advantage of having either the Reeves Muntjac or the white-tailed deer in the pack would be antler shedding. So antlers will scrape their antlers on trees and that could be how they shed their antlers in the game. And yeah, basically it's where a deer will have velvet antlers. So taking the outer layer off and their antlers gradually grow bigger with age. So that's sort of how shedding works in antlers. But you know what I mean. So having this behavior in the game would really add to the depth of realism that deer have. And they are a relatively recent addition as the first deer that we got. Actually, I say that. <laughs> We've had the reindeer since Arctic Pack. And I believe they even shed their antlers. But when it comes to conventional deer, we've only had them since Europe, which was the fallow deer. So, yeah. Having this in the game would certainly add to the realism of deers. Something else that could add realism is summer and winter coats. Now you can see here we have our returning snowshoe hare and the arctic fox. These are the two best examples I could find of having completely different coats to what others would be in the season. So snowshoe hares in the winter they are white, in the summer they are brown. Same with arctic foxes, summer, gray and brown, and in the winter, white. Many animals also adopt this, like dolls and other animals. They would really benefit from having this feature, and it doesn't have to be necessarily completely realistic. Like it could go like patchy as it comes out of season. So like they gradually grow it. So sort of like a patch, a patch, a patch, and then full coat. That could be how it works. 
And yeah, it really adds to the realism of seasonal extremes. And yeah, I would love to see it personally. What do you think? Another major feature would be making the emu a walkthrough animal. Because currently emus are not a walkthrough species. Yes, I have been to many zoos where emus will come right up to you. They're a, sur a surprisingly friendly animal, unlike their cousin, the cassowary, which would, yeah, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> but emus can be generally quite friendly and very inquisitive. That's why they're housed in walkthrough exhibits, as they are largely safe animals to be around. Animals that aren't really safe to be around would be the okapi, the giant anteater, the North American beaver. Giant anteaters and beavers in particular can be very dangerous animals. Like when you get bitten by a beaver, that is quite painful and, yeah, detrimental to your health. Giant anteaters, well, let me just put it this way. They have been known to kill people and jaguars in a death hug. So I don't think having them as a walkthrough animal is a very good idea. Okapis, I just haven't really seen any real-life examples. I wouldn't say that they would be necessarily dangerous. They would just be quite shy. And, yeah, I have never seen an Okafi walkthrough exhibit. If it, if there is one out there, please let me know. But Okafi just doesn't feel right to be a walkthrough exhibit animal as they are a very delicate species to be kept in captivity. I don't know, having the public really going up and interacting with them on a regular basis would be good for the Okafi's health. Now, this doesn't necessarily relate to forests or forest-dwelling animals. But crocodilians resting on the bottom of water bodies would be a great addition, almost as they would use the water as their hard shelter. And yeah, I, I can see that. They, they would be very cool in, underwater utilizing that as their shelter. And yeah, alligators and crocodilians and gharials, caiman crocodiles, all sorts of crocodilians, they all have this behavior. And I would just love to see it in the game. It would be really cool for their added realism. The last two features I would like to talk about is a zoo map maker. So being able to construct a zoo map for your own zoo. So you build your zoo and you're able to create your own map. So you like go up to the top of the top of the map in the sky and take like a screenshot or something like that. And you're able to use animal signs to icon where the animals are in your zoos. So something like this here. So you got a map of your zoo. And you've got these little animals marking where they're found in the zoo. So that would be really cool. That's sort of how a zoo, zoo map works. And being able to recreate that in the game would be a great um, boost to the creativity as creating a zoo map would be actually quite fun. I would love to go through and find where my animals are housed in my zoo, where I've put them, and where guests would be able to find them. I think it would really add to good flow as well for the guests being able to go to specific areas of the zoo as they already know where the animals would be, sort of prioritizing their animal visit. I think that would be really cool. And something else you can see here is animal signage. So these red rough lemurs are a great example. So consistent animal signage is something that we don't really have in the game. And if we were to get two to three signs of every animal in the game to really be able to diversify the exterior presentation of the animals. I think that would be really cool, being able to have animals in different positions. So I like what Conservation Pack did with their siamangs and what the Lar Gibbon also had in the Tropical Pack. The animals being in different positions, doing a different motion, emphasized by the sign. And yeah, just more animal signs to really um, sell the zoo aesthetic would be really cool and be able to add to more creativity on zoo walls and signs and all that sort of stuff. But let me know what you think about these features. And so that is my video for the forest animal pack completed. <laughs> and yeah, it, it's an interesting pack idea and certainly has a lot of potential in the update particularly. And yeah, there are a lot of animals found in forests that would be really welcome additions to the game. But let me know what you think. Would you like to see a forest animal pack or do you think this DLC slot would be best used to highlight some other region of the world or a different environment. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, do leave a like and subscribe for more. And I'll see you in the next video. I don't know if I'll be doing any more of these making of Planet Zoo DLC videos as I've, I've done all the ideas I could come up with, but 
whether I could remake those videos as I've had some ideas for them in recent times. So, hey, I could do them. Let me know if you want me to do that. I could. I would happily do it. But, yeah, let me know. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.